When you work with numbers, you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and perform a wider range of operations on them. There are certain operations we can perform on sets, and that's what we're going to look at today. There are three main operations we're going to look at, union, intersection, and complement. When we talk about the union of two sets, we talk about bringing them together or merging them together. Think about it as a union of states. When the states decided to come together and they formed a union, they came together and became one. The same thing is true with sets. When we have two sets and we perform a union on them, the two sets merge together to become one. Here we have our first example. We have a set that has four colors in it, green, pink, orange, and plaid. Set B also has a few members, blue, yellow, orange, and pink. The union of those two sets is all of those elements combined into one. So A union B would give us green, pink, orange, plaid, blue, and yellow. It takes all of them and puts them into one set. Now notice that some of the items were duplicates. There was an orange in A and an orange in B. We did not list the same element more than once. We only had to list it one time. Let's take a look at some notation for unions. The symbols that we use to denote a union are simply this U or a V. These are the two different symbols. Sometimes you'll see this, sometimes you'll see that. For example, right here you see the V in between A and B. That means A union B. Set A and B are brought together. So if we have set A, which is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 9, and we have set B, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 9, A union B is simply taking all of those numbers, all of those elements, and putting them together into one set. That gives us this set here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's the set A union B. Example 3 gives us two sets. They give us a description of them. The first one is the odd numbers less than 10, and we've written those out right there, and the prime numbers less than 20. And remember, 1 is not a prime number because a prime number has to have two factors, the number 1 and itself. The number 1 only has a single factor, so the smallest prime number is 2, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17. A union B, bring them together like the union of states. We're going to combine those two sets. A union B, here it is. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, and 19. Notice here I've used the notation with the little u. Here I use the notation with the little v. They're synonymous. They really mean the same thing. The next operation that we're interested in is the intersection. When we say intersection, we mean what things do they have in common? Remember we did the Venn diagram and we had the pets. Some people had dogs, some people had cats, and then there was Luke in the middle. He had a dog and a cat. So he was in both circles in the intersection. Intersection is exactly that. It's what the two sets have in common. Here we have our colors again green, pink, orange, plaid for set A, blue, yellow, orange, pink for set B. A intersect B means what does sets A and B have in common? Well, they both have pink, they both have orange. And so A intersect B is simply the set pink, orange. The next example involves intersections using numbers. And just like we had symbols for unions, we have symbols for intersection. We have the upside down U. It almost looks like an N, which makes me think intersection, or the upside down V. So intersection is the, ups, the two symbols upside down. Here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 for set A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 9 for set B. We want the intersection. Intersection means what do they have in common? So let's see, they both have twos, they both have fours, they both have nines. And so A intersect B is the set 249. We have the same set down the bottom here with the odd numbers and the prime numbers that we had before. 
except instead of the union this time, what we're doing is finding the intersection. Odd numbers less than 10, prime numbers less than 20. What do those two sets have in common? They both have the number 3, the number 5, and the number 7. So A intersect B is 3, 5, and 7. Notice how much easier it was when I actually wrote out the numbers in those sets and I underlined or circled the things that they had in common. That's a great strategy for organizing your work and working with these sets. I highly recommend that. The final thing we're going to look at today is the complement. Now, when I say complement, I don't mean like giving a compliment, like saying, hey, subset, you're beautiful. I mean complement with an E. And complement simply means the items that are not in the set. They might be in the super set, the big one, but they're not in the smaller set. Here's the picture we saw a little bit ago. Okay? We had set A with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We had set B that had 7, 8, and 9. We said set B was a subset of A because everything from B was in the bigger set A. However, not everything is in B. The number 2, for example, is not in set B. It's in the complement of B. The number 4 is not in set B. It's in the complement of B. The number 6 is not in set B. It's in the complement of B because it's not in the smaller set. The symbols we use, we have three choices for complement. Sometimes we'll say if we want the complement of set B, we'll say B with like an apostrophe up top there, or we'll say B with a little C up at the top there, or we'll put a squiggle B. The squiggle is read not, it's a logic symbol. So B complement, three different notations you could use. Suppose we have sets A and set B and they tell us that B is a subset of A, which means we're comparing B to A. What is B complement? What is not in B that is in the bigger set? Well, let's see, B has 2, so we'll cross it off. 4, we'll cross it off. 6, we'll cross it off. 8, we'll cross it off. 10 and 12, we'll cross those off also. What's left over is the stuff that's not in B. So B complement, the complement of B, are the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. That's B complement. It's the things that are in the big set, the super set, but not in B. Complement simply means what's left out. Next example, this is example 8, we have U, the universe. The universe is the giant abyss of all the possible things that could be in our sets. We have A and B. B is a subset of the universe. I know that because 200 is in there, 400 is in there, 800 is in there, and so is 900. A is nothing to us. It's really just a distractor. It might as well not be there. What is in the complement of B? Well, let's cross off what we have. We have 200, 400, 800, 900, and the things left over in the universe are the complement of B. So we have 100, 300, 500, 600, and 700. Those are the numbers in the complement of B. Those are the basics of working with sets. Union, bring everything together. Intersection, what do they have in common? Complement, what's left out. Now, the next screen that I'm going to show you is going to have a few examples on it, and it's going to have us doing multiple things. This is actually pretty neat. Take a look at this. Now, as we go through this, I recommend that you write all of this in your notes, especially the comments I've written in the little clouds. Those are very, very helpful as you practice these and get used to them. The first thing they want us to do is find A union B. So we take set A and set B. Union means A and B combined. And so I have A and B combined here. 1, 3, 5, 6, 7. Now over here it says not 
A union B. The little squiggle, remember, is a logic sign. It means not, or the complement of A union B. It's just like order of operations. We do what's in the parentheses first, and then do the outside. Inside was A union B. We just did that. What is not in A union B? Well, let's see. Um, the number two is not here. The number four is not here. So what is not in A union B? The numbers two and four. The third thing they're asking us to do is find A intersect B. A intersect B means what do they have in common? What's in both A and B? Well, the only thing that A and B have in common is the number eight. What is not in A union B or A intersect B? What is the complement of A intersect B? Well, anything that's left out of here. I'll compare it to the universe. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are all left out of here. So what is not in A intersect B? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Finally, not A. What is not in A? What is the complement of A? And we compare it to the universe. A has one, three, five, eight. That leaves us two, four, six, and seven that are not in set A. So that's the complement of set A. Lastly, not not A. Sounds like a double negative, right? And it is. What is not in not A? Well, what is not in here? One, three, five, and eight. Not not A is a double negative. It simply means the same thing as A, just like it would in English or a double negative in, in arithmetic. These can be a little confusing. They take a little bit of practice. But what's important for you to know right now is what an intersection, a union, and a complement are, and being able to take those with you and start applying those. With a little bit of practice, you will be great at these.